Well, welcome back to the Getting Started with TypeScript series. My name is Dan Wallin. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And in the previous video, I introduced why it's worth your time to learn TypeScript. And I talked about five different topics related to that that I think are important to consider. In this video, we're going to jump right into the code aspect, assume that you do want to learn it. And I'm going to show you how we can add TypeScript to an empty project. Now, keep in mind that if you're doing React or Vue or Angular or some other library or framework out there, they likely already have TypeScript support built in. I'm going to show you from scratch, though, because I always think it's important to learn the basics. And then, of course, you can always do the easy way and use whatever library or framework you prefer to use for work. So let's jump right in here. So the first thing we'll do is run npm init, and then we're going to go through a wizard to actually fill in some values for our package.json file. Now, once we have the package.json file, step two is we need to install TypeScript as a package into it. We can do that through this install TypeScript command. Notice we say dash dash save dev because TypeScript doesn't run in the browser at runtime. In other words, we're not going to ship TypeScript to our customers as part of our application. It's only used on our end for us as a developer. Now, once we've done that, we're going to make an easy command that can call into TypeScript and actually compile our code. And now I named it TSC. That's the value on the left there. The value on the right is actually going to point to what gets installed with TypeScript. And I'll show you that coming up. Now, step four is we then need a compiler settings file because we're typically going to override where the code it generates gets put into, what folder do you want it, for example, how strict is it. I like it pretty strict. I like the guardrails, so I don't crash off the canyon walls, as I talked about in the last video. So we can do that with this npm run tsc. Now, that's going to run this previous tsc command, but then notice we add dash dash init on the end. I'll talk about that extra dash dash here in just a sec. Now that'll add the tsconfig.json. Typically you'll configure that a little bit, tweak it to your settings, your preferences. Uh, this file is going to look like the following. You basically can define the target, as you can see here, some module information, where the code gets output, and some other settings such as do you want to be able to debug into your TypeScript files. Typically you do when you're in development mode. And there's some other strict settings you can turn on to add more guardrails. Uh, once we do that, we're going to write our TypeScript code. In this case, notice we just have a simple add function like I showed in the previous video. And then from there, we're off to the races. We can actually build our TypeScript code. So with that, let me go ahead and walk you through these general steps. So I'm going to switch over to VS Code. And you're going to notice there's nothing up my sleeves here, completely empty. So the first thing we're going to do is npm init. Now that's going to walk us through a little wizard. So we'll just type, yep, that looks good. And voila, I now have a package.json file. All right, so we would typically change some of that, but we're off on the right track. Now step two was we come in and we say npm install. And we want to install TypeScript, but I want to save it as a development dependency not a runtime dependency, something just used on my machine or possibly on a build server. Now this should be super fast, and there we have it. Now notice in this node modules that was added, we have a bin. There's your TSC right there. Now we want to provide an easy way, so I don't have to know the path to this .bin and node modules and stuff like that. So I'm actually going to change this test, since right now it does nothing, to, I'm just going to call it TSC. You could call it my build. You can call it whatever you want, actually. That's valid. And then we're going to say TSC and the package JSON and node in general, if I just put that, it will automatically look in here and find that for us. So it kind of simplifies the process. Now that's great. We now have a package JSON. We now have our TypeScript installed as a node module or package but we don't have any compiler settings at this point for TypeScript. So what I'm going to do there is say npm run TSC, okay, but I don't want to compile. I actually want to initialize a tsconfig file. So let me hit enter, 
And notice this now generates this tsconfig.json. Now, if you're wondering why I put this, it's kind of like saying, okay, I'm done with this part of the command. It's almost like putting a period on the sentence. And then the dash dash init is like the next sentence. Now, then do this. Um, if you don't do that, it won't work right in some cases. So that's why we put that extra dash dash there. Kind of ends the first part and then moves on to the second. All right, now we have our TS config, but does it have everything we want? Well, it actually has a ton of stuff, you'll see. Don't let that intimidate you. Normally, you'll just have a pretty small TS config. Depends, of course, but I'm going to change this up. We don't want to target ES5 because that's pretty old these days. So we're going to do ES2017 for module, even though I'm not doing modules yet in this particular demo, but I'm going to change it to ES2020. We're going to come down and say source maps true. That's going to allow for debugging. Uh, I do want to output my code into a specific folder. Otherwise, it'll put it right where your source code is, right where your TS file is, which we're going to add next. But I'm going to make a folder called dist. So at the root of the project, when we build, it's going to generate a dist folder, and that's where the JavaScript files would go. So now what we can do is we have our package JSON, we have TypeScript, and we have a compilation file. Now we're kind of ready to go. We need to add some TypeScript. So I normally create an SRC folder. You'll see that in most projects for source. And then we'll add a new file. Let's just call it main.ts because it's kind of our main file right now. It's our only file. So we'll do a function add, and I'm going to do X and Y. I showed this in the previous video and we'll return x plus y. Now notice these are red. Parameter x implicitly has an any type. Well, that's because the strictness, I don't think that's a word, but I just made it, is turned up really high for this project. Again, it's adding these guardrails so that we do things we should be doing when we use TypeScript. What are x and y? Right now, they're anything. Okay, that's normal JavaScript. They could be a variable that's of type Boolean. Uh, they could be, uh, I said variable parameters, kind of more what I mean, of a string or array. Well, we want to now be very specific. These are numbers. We're adding after all. And so we're going to go ahead and add in that. Now that is our entire file. Extremely basic, I realize. But it gets us started. So the next step is now we want to compile using this TSC. So to do that, notice I don't have a dist folder yet, but I can now run npm run TSC, and that's all, just TSC. And there we go. We now have a dist folder. There's our main JS. Notice it stripped out all the TypeScript stuff. It stripped out the guardrails because now we're ready to run it in the browser. And it added a debug file. I'll show you a little bit about that coming up here shortly. Now, those are the main steps to get started with TypeScript, and we could go even further. We could add Webpack or Parcel or a bundler to take these scripts, like main, and compress and bundle them so that we could ship them to production. But we're going to stop right here for this particular video. Now, I already have a project that has all of this in it. Let me switch over to that. I've added just a little bit more just to show you. So if I go into package.json, you're going to see the TSC. I also added a little web server that will run on local host on our machines, uh, just called HTTP server. And when we run this HTTP server command, what it's going to do is go ahead and launch a web server and then launch the browser. And I'll show you that in a second. So let me go ahead and build. We know how to do that. Run TSC. So let's get our dist folder out. There we go. And then I added an index HTML here that simply points to that. It then calls the add function, this loads, and then updates the DOM, the document object model, this little guy right here, with the result. So we should get nine, obviously, if my math is correct. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to say npm run HTTP server. Now that should launch my browser. And there we go. Let's refresh, make sure it's working. Okay, we get nine. Now I want to show you something really cool to wrap up here. If you're new to this, one of the arguments I used to hear from people that really hadn't done TypeScript, and I don't know if they were just scared of jumping into this world or what it was, but I 
hear these arguments, oh, don't use TypeScript, you can't debug it. Well, as long as you turn on that source map that I showed you, and let's go back to that really quick. That's right in here. And I turned on source map true. That's what caused this file to be generated. Now you might notice at the bottom of the main, it adds a link to that map file we call it. It's a debug file. Now let me show you what that debug file does. Let's go back to the browser. I'm gonna hit Command P or Control P if you're on Windows. And I'm gonna type main, and then notice main TS, main JS. Main JS is what's running in the browser right now. Main TS is my source code. So you'll notice the paths here in the dist and the SRC. Now what's nice about this is I can actually come in, this is now my TypeScript, this is not the code that's running in the browser, but it will link the code that's running in the browser back to the TypeScript, and I can set up a breakpoint here, hit refresh, and notice it just hit it, and we get the X and Y values. I can mouse over those, get four and five, and then to continue, in this case we could just hit the little play button here or here, and it writes out nine again like you saw earlier. All right, so to wrap up here, that's how you can get started with TypeScript. That's how you can build it, get everything configured. Now, if you want an example of the project I just showed, you could go to this github.com slash getting started with TypeScript. Hopefully that long name makes it clear what it is. I'll be putting a lot more of the demos coming up in the other videos into this particular repo. So feel free to either clone or download the zip, and then you can run the exact project. Just follow the steps in the readme that you'll see. So thanks again for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next video. Please like and subscribe so you can know about it, and we'll see you next time.